Today we're taking a look at the HP Reverb G2 VR headset and its new version 2.0 breakout box. After initial release of the G2, some users were experiencing connection issues with the headset, especially on AMD based PCs. It appears between BIOS updates from motherboard manufacturers and a new breakout box from HP, these issues may finally be sorted. Let's take a closer look. Welcome back, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. If any of you are regular watchers of the channel, you'll know I like to take a week off from time to time, whether that's just to have a break to spend some time with the family, or it's because I bought myself a new toy that I want to try out. Well, that's precisely why there was no video last week. I was too busy checking out the Reverb G2 from HP. I was able to pick up this VR headset from Staples for $70 off. I paid $5.29 before tax for it with free shipping. Unfortunately, since then, it's no longer listed on Staples' website, but it has, however, been on sale directly from HP for $450, which is $150 off its normal price of $599. As of the time of writing this script, it's currently on sale from HP for $550, which is still a great price for what the headset offers. The Reverb G2 boasts a resolution of 2160 by 2160 per eye with a decently large sweet spot. This was the biggest turnoff for me when it came to VR headsets. I used to own one of the original HP Windows Mixed Reality headsets when they were first launched, and after using it for a day, I promptly returned it because of how blurry everything looked. There's basically none of that with the Reverb G2. Even when comparing the G2 to premium offerings like the Valve Index and the HTC Vive Pro 2, in my opinion, the G2 is hands down the winner in terms of visuals. The headset does, however, use inside-out tracking via the four cameras mounted on the headset itself. This is a departure from the Vive and Index, which use base stations to track your controllers. The base station method is far more accurate, but kind of a pain to set up, and since there's more hardware, these systems usually cost more as well. Well, I'm here to tell you that unless you're a controller tracking snob, and it's perfectly okay if you are, you won't be disappointed with the controller tracking of the G2. There will still be people who prioritize controller tracking and want the most precision possible. If that's the case, this may not be the headset for you. If you're okay with say 80% of what a base station system would offer in terms of tracking, or you plan on using this with simulation games like Microsoft Flight Sim or a set of Corsa where you won't be using the controllers, I can tell you what a great value this setup is at the MSRP of $600, let alone when it's on sale like it has been from HP for $150 off. Now let's get to the elephant in the room, connection issues. This was brought to light shortly after the G2 released and made its rounds in the news cycle. I didn't honestly pay too much attention to it at the time because since I had a bad experience with my first VR headset, I hadn't planned on buying another. Fast forward several months and I assumed all of these connection issues had been worked out via motherboard BIOS updates. However, it turns out that BIOS updates helped some while it did nothing for others. Checking out posts on Reddit, it appears to still be a very widespread issue. Since my computer is AMD based, I knew there was a chance I might still have issues, but I recently started playing Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 since it's on Game Pass Ultimate, so I really wanted to give VR another shot. As previously mentioned, I found the G2 on sale on Staples website for $70 off, so I took the jump and ordered one. It arrived a few days later, and as I was unboxing it, I was so excited about the whole thing that I completely forgot about potential connection issues. I got it all hooked up, downloaded Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR, and started up Project Cars 2. About halfway through my first Porsche series practice session, I realized I hadn't yet had any connection problems. I spent the rest of the night playing Project Cars 2 and ran the new body NSX around Laguna Seca without issue. At one point, I was so immersed in the game thanks to the incredible visuals the G2 has on offer that when I accidentally slid off track towards the wall, for a split second I was scared for my life as if I was actually heading towards a barrier in a $200,000 supercar. Fast forward a couple days and after having finally gotten used to the flight stick controls in Microsoft Flight Sim, I decided to give it a shot in VR for the first time. I can't put into words how incredible it is flying over an area like the islands of Bora Bora in VR, especially using the G2. There's absolutely zero screen door effect whatsoever, and best of all, still no connection issues. 
So at this point, I decided to do some research on Reddit to see who was still having connection issues with the G2, what setup they were running, and why mine appeared to be doing just fine. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad it was working correctly, but I was just surprised based on what I had read. Well, it turns out that HP recently created a new version 2.0 breakout box that connects the headset to your PC, and I just happened to be lucky enough to have purchased one that included this new breakout box. The new breakout box is slightly larger than the first generation model and also includes a power button so you don't have to unplug the power adapter when you aren't using the headset. Best of all, it appears to have finally put the nail in the coffin when it comes to connection issues using the G2 paired with an AMD system. According to HP, this new box is being shipped with all new G2 headsets going forward, which as I said, I can confirm since it came with mine. HP will also be offering this new connection box for current G2 owners that are having issues free of charge if you contact support. So what about controller tracking then? While the G2 is incredibly popular with sim players who use steering wheels and flight sticks, it seems a lot of the VR community still prefer headsets like the Vive and Index which offer better tracking via base stations. There's no debating that the Index's base station tracking is far superior to the inside out system of the G2, but playing the first person shooter Pavlov with my G2, I had precisely zero tracking issues. Now it's fair to point out that I've never used a headset with base station tracking before, so it might just be a situation where I don't know what I'm missing out on. I can say for certain though that if you're new to VR like I was and hadn't experienced anything besides inside out tracking, then you won't have any issues with it. It's also worth noting that if you are coming from a system with base stations, you can absolutely set up the G2 to use those same base stations and your current controllers for the best of both worlds. So let's wrap this one up and summarize who this headset's for and whether or not you should spend your money on one. The first scenario is clear and simple. If you're a sim player using steering wheels or flight sticks, buy the G2 like right now. Don't even finish watching this video, go buy one immediately. You won't be disappointed. If you aren't someone who plays a lot of sim games and are going to lean heavily on controller tracking on the G2, this may still be the headset for you. If you've never experienced base station tracking and you're wanting to get into VR, I would still highly recommend this headset due to its relatively low cost of entry. If you're a VR veteran with a system that uses base stations and you're not going to sell your current headset to fund the G2 purchase, I'd go ahead and get the G2 and set it up with your current base stations and controllers. The one situation where I'd probably steer someone away from the G2 is if you prefer the precision of base station tracking and we're planning on selling your current base station tracked headset to fund the G2. I think in this situation you might be disappointed with the G2. Again, as I said before, I can't say for certain since I've never used a base station tracked headset, so it may be best if you check out some other videos on YouTube so you can get additional perspectives on that. And that's going to do it for this week's video. I'd like to apologize ahead of time if I miss some uploads in the near future because I'm absolutely loving the G2 and plan on using it whenever I get the chance. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. Consider subscribing if you aren't already and hit the bell icon so you're notified when our next video goes live. We appreciate you watching and we will see you in the next one.